Hello everybody, Chaos Chunk here, and I'm going to be doing a video today on how to automate a Tinker Smeltery. Um, now this is going to be for the Karma Mod Pack. All the mods that you see me using here are part of the Karma Mod Pack, but they're pretty regular mods um, that are in most things like FTB Infinity and stuff like that. So we're going to be using some Ender IO, we're going to be using some extra utilities, um, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to start off with just the basic early game automation of the smeltery. And how um, I usually start off with that is currently you see here there's a pipe. There's actually I have a bedrockium drum down there just leading into here. And if you guys want me to show you how to do a um, lava pump in the nether to pump into this so you basically have unlimited lava, um, I'll definitely do that in another video just to comment on the things below. So first off, uh, initial automation, what I usually do, and you can do this part here with a Ender IO item conduit or any number of the ways to move items. I just happen to use a hopper because it's easy early game to get and it's pretty understanding. Now, if you didn't catch what I did there, if you don't know how hoppers work, I'm, I'm shift right clicking and I'm clicking it so that the little thing points into the controller is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a chest on the top there. And that'll allow me to then go ahead and just put this into here. And you'll see that anything that we put into here will then go into here and start smelting inside the smeltery. So that's how you can automate placing bulk items into the smeltery quickly. Remember, one of the caveats or side effects of this is if you put things like... uh copper and something else in or things that mix they will automatically mix in the smeltery um, to create that alloy so you're going to want to probably separate out um, you know things that don't mix together uh, this would be a perfect case for if you wanted to do uh, multiple smelteries to do multiple things all right so the this is done and this is the initial how you get things in later on what i would do is i would add an ender chest here um, with a um, item conduit coming out of it, it to automatically get things set so that I could put it into an ender chest and then the ender chest would feed in here is how you would do it. And I, I'll, I, if you guys want me to explain that a little bit more, it's the same concept except for it's an ender chest which allows you to basically send from unlimited distances. So that being said, you can see here that we've got some molten iron in here. And I also, for another thing later on, I'm going to go ahead and put some molten gas, glass. But let's go ahead and start with the other side of it. And how do you get the items out once it's been poured? Um, how do you get them out of the smeltery? Uh, and I actually did completely forget one specific piece here that I definitely need for the smeltery. And that's called... Um, uh, seared faucet or drains or whatever you want to call them and for this part you definitely need these these on here okay so the way we're going to do this is the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and put three hoppers underneath here and notice how i'm shift clicking them all so that they all point if you want me to bash away here and show that they all point into this chest okay and them all point in the chest of uh, they're gracious enough to know that if you have a template in here that it doesn't pull the template out it does pull out just what goes in here then all we need to do is we need to take a redstone clock and we can pop it right here and as soon as i do that that should start automatically pouring that right there is the simplest way to completely automate without anything more you've got the the ore coming in automatically being melted automatically being poured into the drain, automatically be carried out of the drain and placed into the chest, all right? So it's great for running up, just throw a stack of iron in there and walk away and do whatever you want to do. But say we want to do more than one. So the way that we would do more than one is we could attach a seared brick there. Now, I have not reported this bug. I don't know if it's a bug. I haven't really looked into it because I just found a workaround around for it. But you do... So you're going to take a piece of redstone and go over to that one there. You'll notice that it's not pouring. You would think that it would because I believe if I do this one, it should pour. Okay, and as you can see, that one 
is pouring. Now, I'm sure that there's some mixing of red, redstone signals back and forth that's causing an issue. But the way that I've found to fix this is that I've put one there. And then I've gone ahead and gone here. And this sometimes fixes the problem. Sometimes it's don't, it doesn't. And I think what I've been able to do is do this and do this and do that. And like I said, sometimes it fixes the problem. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes I'm just stuck with just two working. On my world, or my karma world, um, I do have three of these working. Again, I don't know why the deal is where one does and one doesn't or so on and so forth. Now, another thing that I also do is that I put a lever um, right here on the clock because I want the ability to turn this off. Because when I have another item in there that I don't necessarily want to automatically make into ingots, I want the ability to be able to turn off that I, this pour spout. So that right there, you guys, is completely how you would automate um, the smeltery so that you could just put things in one end over here and then put it in. Now, of course, I know there's a million ways to do this, um, but this is a way that I currently have discovered how to do it. So we're going to go ahead and go on to the next way in a more advanced way on how to do this. And what I want to do first is I'm going to pop this guy out of here and I'm going to get a bucket. And I'm going to get a bucket and I'm going to also get ender fluid conduit is what I'm going to get. Okay. And another thing that I'm going to need um, is I might need a filter. I can't remember. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second. So I've got my bucket sitting here and I'm going to pop a bucket in there and then I'm going to come into here and I'm going to flip these out so that the, the molten glass is on the bottom and the iron's on the top. And then I'm going to pour some molten glass onto that bucket, essentially filling the bucket up with molten glass is what I'm going to be doing. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to um, set the ender fluid conduit to um, only accept that type of fluid so then we're going to go over here and we're going to pop these three uh ender fluid conduits onto these three spouts is what we're going to do and i also need um a yetter wrench one of these days i'm really really new at these videos so thinking through and completely preparing for the videos is something new for me i like to separate out um so i'm going to go ahead and put a space in between these like so so that they are separate, completely separate entities. So basically what we have is an ender fluid conduit pointing into these three things. And also, of course, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and send, uh, do our um, hoppers so that they will suck out the bottom, okay? So the hoppers are all leading all into that chest. Now, I don't, I, a lot of people will do blocks. I'm a person that that doesn't want the extra step of converting the blocks over to ingots so i just do straight ingots and it works fine for me it's up to you you can do blocks here but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna show you how to just make one thing out of this so what we want to do is we want to set this to extract we want it to extract without a signal but we only want it to extract glass molten glass okay um and so, and then I'm going to set this like so, and as you can see, it is now only extracting molten glass. When it gets to the iron, it will not export the iron, okay? So, as you can see, it's automatically being taken out by the thing, and it's automatically being put in here. You should see molten glass coming in there. Obviously, I did something wrong, like possibly right here is where I did it wrong. I didn't do that. So this should now be routing molten glass into here, unless, of course, I did something wrong, which is highly likely. <laughs> so uh, let's do this, do this, do this, do this. Let's see if this bad boy will. And there, like so. All right, see if that pours out when it solidifies. There it goes. It pour, pulled out, and let's see if it comes up and it's still not going in there, so I oh I see what the problem is. Problem right here. Boop, there it is. See, little troubleshooting there for you. There's the problem. So now we should start seeing more glass come into here. We should see that count up to ten here in just a bit. Let's see if I'm wrong. There's ten. So you can see that it's completely pouring in. Um, you can of course do the same exact thing with these uh, conduits over here. You can go ahead and place your conduits here, and it does the exact same way. 
You can also set this to effect by a redstone signal. So go all the way over here. You can pop your redstone signal right here, and you can tell this to no longer work if you want to. Say that you are making ingots over here and you don't want the ingots to pour anymore, or, or I'm sorry, you're making blocks over here and you don't want them to pour anymore. Theoretically, that should stop it. And why it's not is, oh, that should stop it. Yes, now it's stopped. This is on. This is off. Okay. So that should stop um, it from pouring. And that's a way that you can automate it. Sometimes I will also do something like a redstone lamp here um, so that it will blink when when it's operating so I know that it's on. So if I'm going to come over here and do something, uh, I, will, I will know that it's on and I know that I need to take it off. And then also you could do something along the lines of... Um, putting your lever there and so on and so forth. If you know your redstone and stuff like that, you know the different things you can do. So this right here, you guys, is how to automate a Tinker's Construct smeltery using mods like Ender IO, and I believe that this is Extra Utilities. Yes, Extra Utilities Clock and Ender IO. This is all early game stuff that you can do off the cuff. You just need a little bit of redstone, some smooth stone to make that. Um, and of course, you know, this is just a chest and iron um, ingots to make these. So all of it's really early game stuff. Uh, you can find me if you want to, if you're finding this just through YouTube, you can find me every day except for Mondays. Currently we're taking Mondays off. That may change in a year from now. Who knows? Every day about Monday on Twitch TV at chaos chunk, uh, forward slash, uh, Tash, uh sorry, twitch.tv forward slash chaos chunk. And with links below to all the mods and everything like that will be there. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks for watching and we out. <laughs>